So, uh, hi everyone. So, I am William. I'm part of a startup Grind Jakarta. Jessica and me are organizing in every month uh, of the Startup Grind event. And tonight we are, we feel honored that we have Tizar. So, Tizar itself, it's a partner of Colibra Capital, a venture capital that focus on helping some of Indonesian company to grow in business in Indonesia. Yes, before this, Tizar has been in private equity venture capital industry since 2007, USA, Singapore, and now in Indonesia. And without further ado, I will start to introduce Tizar and hi Tizar. And yes, would you like to say anything about yourself to the participants here? Uh, yeah, I think. Uh... Uh, thank you for the invitation uh, to join this event. I think this is a very nice uh, 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 community. Although I, I was actually surprised when you asked, you gave me the topic, and uh, but then I think that's interesting to to discuss. Although, uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it will be quite a difficult topic <laughs> to discuss. <laughs> okay. Yes, and. Um... Difficult topic means like interesting topics to everyone. <laughs> so yeah, yes, I guess um, we have to say uh, we have to this. I mean, uh, to be open about the venture capital, the bad, the ugly, the good. I think not many people are willing to to share about uh, uh, this kind of topic. And, and we feel honored to have you now. Yeah. So before we are going more detail into a venture capital, we we know that you have a lot of experiences in business from your, your working experience in US, Singapore, now in Indonesia, you have even a lot of business as well experience. So can you tell us about your experiences building some business in Indonesia? Okay, so uh, in Indonesia, I, uh, maybe I just tell you about my background. So I started my career as an engineer. Uh, we, uh, 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 I, I graduated from uh, Nanyang uh, Technological University in Singapore, and in the very in the first uh, in the third year of my job there, I actually invented something for Intel uh, in power management semiconductor. And from there, actually, I moved on to uh, uh, Hewlett Packard, and yeah, and happened to study law, uh, intellectual property law, uh, because of the patent that I invented uh, during my first uh, very first job. And from there, actually, uh, uh, that opened up uh, the uh, career opportunity in a venture capital back in the U.S. Yeah. So uh, finally, I came back to Indonesia in 2010. Uh, at the time, uh, uh, initially because of the uh, family reason, uh, because I have been abroad for many years, 13 years uh, overseas, and then I finally uh, decided to, to come back to Indonesia. So uh, from there, actually, I have been involved in uh, private equity deals. So in private equity, uh, private equity deals, uh, the first project I did was oil and gas. Uh, it was a turnaround business where basically uh, when I joined, the company was in a deep ship situation. But then uh, within a year, we actually helped to uh, turn around the situation. We uh, deployed a good corporate governance inside, a good uh, acquisition uh, uh, M&A model inside, and a, a system, uh, a business development system inside. And within a year, uh, we lead, we, uh, I was uh, actually the team leader to, uh, to, to list the company in Toronto Stock Exchange. And from there, actually, that's one of the, the, uh, the first experience that I did in, when I was in Indonesia. From there, actually, I joined uh, another private equity uh, in Singapore, uh, from from this for, for this uh, Singapore private equity, uh, I helped the company uh, to expand to Indonesia, basically opening up new market for them in Indonesia. And uh, uh, there are many uh, there are support industry. First of all is uh, seafood processing. Second was uh, shipyard, and uh, the third one was uh, it was in the uh, logistic. Yeah. So those are the three industries that I was involved. And, but then actually, uh, since I came back to Indonesia, I have been actually involved in the, uh, uh, I'm not really involved, but in the beginning was it, uh, monitoring the uh, 
uh, startup industry, startup community in Indonesia. Uh, so uh, that's actually how I got to know uh, Leon at the first place when he first uh, set up uh, Tokopedia back then. And uh, it was it it was interesting because uh, in Indonesia, I mean uh, the the startup ecosystem just started, I guess, in 2011 or 12. Mm -hmm. uh, before yes. that, not so many attention uh, for the uh, startup community here in Indonesia. But uh, uh, at the time, it was difficult for me to uh, be uh, to invest directly in 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 this uh, in this space in Indonesia because there were, uh, I mean, the, the ecosystem was not set up yet. So it's totally different from whatever I had uh, experienced back in the U.S. Uh, there are, uh, but then the good thing because of the uh, economic crisis, not economic crisis, the global crisis, uh, financial global crisis in the world, Indonesia got a lot of attention, and slowly uh, a lot of uh, company uh, from overseas come to Indonesia and invested in Indonesia. But then, of course, uh, during the infancy uh, years of uh, venture capital in Indonesia. Uh, a lot of challenges. So uh, even uh, there are many, uh, there are many uh, uh, startup founders. But then, in terms of the quality, there are not so many uh, a good one. But then at the same time, uh, everyone was still uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, sit back and learning and see how the progress uh, go. Even I myself uh, at the time wanted to invest in Tokopedia, and then uh, I uh, I brought I invited so many people. Not not many people believe in me, because people will, people uh, run away uh, from investing in uh, startup in Indonesia. Because first Indonesia, uh, I mean, is the uh, is not a destination. It's not a sexy destination back then, and Indonesia is not known for uh, a country that has uh, that produced a lot of human talent. But the market is really big, and then now uh, we become one of the Indonesia become one of the uh, uh, country that produce the most unicorn in the world. Yeah. So that's basically the story. And then until 2016, uh, we uh, 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 at the time uh, finally I actually uh, together with a few friends actually invested uh, directly in the startup because. Uh, because in 2016, the the industry in Indonesia quite mature. Uh, initially, uh, I think in the past the trend was to pursue growth at all costs, and that's not actually something that uh, I like. Uh, that doesn't ring the bell with my investment philosophy. For us, it's like uh, uh, the fundamental is number one. Profitability is number one. Yes, you have to uh, achieve growth, but uh, of course, it has to it has to go along with your profitability and revenue. Otherwise, uh, it will be difficult uh, for you to justify in the future about your valuation. And somewhat in 2016, uh, after maybe five years or four years, uh, I mean, uh, uh, in the I mean, for the venture capital to invest, uh, other venture capital to invest in Asia. The trend of an investment has uh, changed at that time. So at the beginning, uh, I think the uh, many investors were very generous to the founders, startup founders here in Indonesia, mm -hmm. whereby uh, uh, people can get money easily. But in 2016, the this there was uh, slight changes. But of course, it's not something that I really like to have. I mean, it's not yet what I like to have. Uh, the valuation is still quite high, but somewhat the, the mindset has actually changed to the toward profitability at the very least. And and and, and especially now uh, during the COVID situation, uh, that actually uh, the profitability profitability becomes uh, uh, important for everyone because without cash, without revenue, uh, how do you survive in this kind of market? Yes. Yeah. Thanks. So. Uh, coming into the beginning time when you are you were in uh, Colibra, how do you manage and develop Colibra from the beginning and until now? Okay, so uh, I set up Colibra together with my partners uh, uh, because at a time uh, prior to that we have been investing in in the uh, startup uh, personally. 
Yeah, so uh, we have idealism, we have vision, why we want to invest in startup. First thing is, of course, uh, because we are passionate about the industry, uh, about the space, we want to always learn, we want to actually mingle with the, uh, the founders. Uh, we like new ideas, we like to brainstorm together with them, and we like to get involved uh, very much. And that's what we have been doing uh, while we actually invested on a personal basis. And uh, throughout the years, uh, we discovered that uh, if we want to invest uh, seriously uh, 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 in this uh, space, in uh, startup space, uh, at a time it was difficult to uh, it was difficult uh, to work with uh, at the existing investor uh, because we have a different way of doing investment that actually focus much on the collaboration and then uh, actively involved with the, with, with the uh, founders. And that's why we set up Colibra Capital. Uh, although, uh, having said that, yeah, of course, we have to work together closely with all the uh, 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 venture capital that's already available in the yeah. market. But yeah, I, I guess everyone has a different way of doing it. Everyone has different color. Uh, we have our own color. We have our own philosophy. We have our own thesis. And I guess uh, that the hope is actually to also to bring the uh, what do you call it, uh, different perspective for the uh, uh, yeah. startup community in Indonesia. Because uh, at the beginning, I mean, uh, there are three of us. Uh, uh, myself, the uh, financial professional that has been in this industry uh, since 2012, uh, 2007 in the U.S. And uh, Dion that has been successful with Tokopedia. So he is uh, a real startup uh, founder, an entrepreneur. And uh, Nara who came from a family business. So the idea is actually to bring uh, a well-rounded perspective for the uh, not only Indonesian startup, but also global startup that would like to expand to Indonesia. So we become uh, we can provide a one-stop solution for the startup. And the other thing, the, the other reason why we, we decided to do this, because we uh, when we uh, when we invest, we we think that uh, uh, collaboration is very important. Why? Because uh, many of the, uh, the in the past, we see that many of the investors, uh, although they say they add value, they want to commit to do things, but it's not really happening. Because uh, when we were individual investors, we were called all the time uh, by the portfolio company, and then uh, they 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 told us like, yeah, not many other investors are actually willing to to be uh, hands on. So that's why we thought, oh, this is important. And the second thing is also <clears throat> in terms of like uh, uh, commitment, in terms of like brainstorming, because uh, uh, when uh, in, 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 in running a startup, actually fundraising is not the most difficult part. The, the most difficult part is actually to stay strong. As a startup founder, I mean, you are really, uh, you are on top, uh, but then it's, uh, the, the, the phrase say, says it's a very po a lonely position on top. Because when you lead a company, when you start a, a company, you have to appear strong in front of your team, members in front of your family, in front of your business partner, because every everyone look at you as the leader in your company. And, 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 and as, as, as a leader, sometimes you really need a, a support, uh, a founding partner. A, a brainstorming partner, and that's actually our our goal to to be uh, the sounding partner, because that's what we have realized that this is really the, uh, the 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 needs of the entrepreneur, because if uh, if they want to uh, get money, there are plenty of VC that can actually provide money. But then, if they want to have uh, somebody who really committed to uh, to brainstorm together with the uh, uh, with with them. Uh, there might be not many of them uh, in available in the market. And the second thing is also we want to really protect the interests of the uh, founders because many of the, may, may, um, uh, most of the time, uh, uh, the founders, I mean, uh, we, we saw this, a lot of the venture capital, uh, uh, not venture capital, but investors, they have, uh, uh, they, they might have uh, 
a different agenda because of the background of the investors behind them. So we want to be, we want to make sure that we become the independent investor with no string attached other than just make, maximizing your company to become uh, profitable, to become as big as possible so then we can exit and, and uh, successful together. So this is something, uh, the other reason that we, we want to set up uh, Colibra uh, to, uh, so that uh, the uh, founders can really achieve their dreams without being uh, driven by the, uh, the hidden agenda of the investor. And that is something that I think we believe it is uh, very important for the uh, uh, founders themselves. Yeah. And finally, oh. of course, mm -hmm. yeah, the, uh, in terms of like, uh, 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 in terms of like the uh, know-how, uh, when, and, and, uh, and due diligence, uh, we believe that uh, when we invest also, we have to know the uh, founders really well because the spirit of collaboration if we don't yep. know the founders uh, well how to collaborate and this is this is the difference of colibra uh, the main difference of colibra with any other venture capital for us uh, we we put focus on getting to know the founders really well mm -hmm. and we conduct due diligence and uh, we actually take time to invest uh, to get to know the founders first. Uh, it's not like many other VCs that can actually write a term sheet after this first meeting, after 24 hours or 48 hours, <laughs> and you can receive the term sheet and then the money deployed to you. So we don't do that. Yeah, we we are, uh, we are have process. So we, we create an investment thesis. We create, uh, we need to know your business partner. We need to know your market. We need to know your clients. And from there, then we can have a meaningful relationship. And from there, we, we know exactly who you are. And then you also get to know us who we are. And then you can decide whether, yes, we can add value or not. If, if we don't, then you don't need to select us as one of your investors. But then if yes, then let's collaborate together. I guess uh, uh, that's the reason why we set up Colibra. Oh. Thank you, Tiza, for sharing the value. I think that's a very great value because I would like to highlight again the value that you just mentioned about the collaboration and also the brainstorming as a co-partner with the co-founder and also like protect the interests of the founders so there is no hidden agenda of the investor itself. And then how you build a strong due diligence, get to know the founders, chemistry of the founders itself. Yes, and as a part of the integrated value, <clears throat> and that's your interesting part within within the the Colibra and also with the founders. But we would like be, also know more about how does the usually we learn. We also hear about the term LP, limited partner, mm. and mm. and how does. In, you can just share in general, how does the VC make a relation with the LP? And maybe some of uh, the participants here are wondering why, what, what LP is and how does VC secure investment from LP as well? Okay, so uh, uh, venture capital is, is a fund manager, basically. It's a financial institution. We manage investors' money as well. So uh, we invest uh, as, a, as a general partner, uh, we invest our own money, but at the same time, we manage the investors' money. The investors, in this case, we call limited partners. So basically, they are uh, similar like any uh, uh, shareholder in a typical company without uh, voting uh, power. The voting power is given to the general, uh, uh, general partner who actually decide and run the day-to-day -day operation of venture capital of, uh, to invest in portfolio company. And uh, how do we get, uh, how, uh, uh, why actually uh, investors are willing to invest in uh, venture capital and work with us? Because doing, uh, uh, in investing in startup is actually different from investing in, uh, for example, property that you can just invest and then you don't need to look after, if you, you wait for 10 years, the land will still be there, it will not be gone. Yes. <laughs> so uh, you don't need maintenance. 
you don't need uh, you don't need a lot of uh, a lot of hand, uh, day to day monitoring or monthly monitoring regular monitoring but then it's different because in uh, venture capital you, we deal with uh, uh, business and this is early stage business whereby uh, a lot of uh, i mean uh, it's not like uh, it's not like any uh, it's not like for example if you invest in uh, mutual fund they also invest in companies, but then this company are matured company with constant cash flow, constant EBITDA, constant, uh, not constant, but I mean, at, at least uh, measured EBITDA, uh, track record, and so on. But at the uh, startup, uh, the, uh, uh, the move, moving variable, moving pieces a lot, there are many of them. So that's why uh, to invest in a startup, you cannot, it become a full-time job by, by itself. You cannot just uh, rely upon report. You really need to know the industry. You really need to know the, the founders. And if they have problems, you, you can step up and help them. And, and uh, it's different uh, when you set up, uh, when you invest in mutual fund, whereby you invest, for example, in, in, in BCA. Uh, in BCA has like 1,000 or I don't know, hundreds or thousand uh, employee. So they have all the support system in place. But for startup, uh, this is a small early, age, uh, early stage company that doesn't have the, the army of professionals to, to, to help them. So uh, that's why they, they really need uh, guidance or help from uh, 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 the investors. And that, that's the real value that the investors can provide. Mm. Many successful people, many successful entrepreneurs, uh, they can invest directly in startup too, but they might not have the time to actually uh, uh, help the, uh, the, uh, the, the founders directly. They, they, might, they might have the experience, they might have the passion, but they don't have the time uh, because yes. they need to still focus on their own business. Right? True. And the second thing, uh, if they are overseas, they are not from Indonesia, uh, it will be difficult to understand the uh, all the uh, uh, ecosystem here in Indonesia because uh, it's a different jungle. I myself, if I have to invest in India, I don't know much about India, for, for example. I can read from the research paper, from the magazine, and from the internet, but it's totally different. I think we all agree that as an Indonesia, Indonesian people, we, we believe that uh, uh, whatever reported there is different from what actually we experience here because I, I live overseas and then everyone was scared about Indonesia. Oh, a lot of terrorists, a lot of <laughs> the high crime. And I said, no, actually in the US, the crime rate is higher than in Jakarta itself. So it's uh, actually, I feel very safe in Jakarta. So, but then people get a different kind of uh, uh, image. And so that's the, the app value that we can, we can actually provide to our investors, limited partners, for those successful entrepreneur with, uh, or a uh, business owner, we can actually uh, be, uh, uh, become we we, uh, we can actually become the extension for them. They can still get exposure investing in uh, in the uh, startup, but then uh, uh, we can we can do on the uh, on the full time basis. Yeah, for those overseas, yeah, we can we can provide the Indonesian angle. Uh, 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 perspective, yeah, and of course, uh, as many of you maybe you have heard about diversification. So as I said, uh, even there are many uh, uh, invest uh, venture capital, right? I mean, like available in the market, but everyone has a different color. So you 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 might agree with this. Uh, 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 I mean, uh, 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 approach, but you also. Uh, but then uh, you you might want to diversify your portfolio also, yep. yeah. So I, I think that's the uh, uh, the main thing that we can uh, provide to the uh, limited partners, yeah. Yes. On top, of course, other than that, information, because I guess most of them, uh, uh, if they are, uh, uh, they, they they can get they can get uh, direct uh, uh, information from the uh, from from the market here. Uh, yes. Not uh, because if you 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 read from the uh, newspaper, not, normally it's it's not really uh, 
it is different. There are so many hidden <laughs> information from uh, <laughs> politi politically correct information. I'll put it that yes. way. Yes. All right. Okay. Thank you for sharing about how does how VC has a relation with limited partner because most of the time we know information that yes VC with the founder but behind that as well there is a VC with the limited partner so what you are just sharing it is very valuable and currently we are understanding that we are in the new normal during COVID-19 right and you have shared about how how is your uh, VC your VC relationship with the founders and the limited partner and understanding that yes we are we know that today is there is a new normal because of there is a COVID nineteen and this thing has changed a lot in the startup landscape and in every business situation and what has ch changed in your what's in the business model or maybe in the handling the portfolio right now because of this COVID itself? Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, uh, I guess we have been disciplined in our uh, way of investing. So uh, uh, internally, we have what we call a limited partner advisory whereby uh, every quarter we actually have a, a regular meeting with them. That is where we update uh, our investors about what's going on in the market and what, what is our view and what is our plan. Yeah. So that has been happening since the, uh, the day uh, one we actually operated. So basically uh, the investors, uh, they, don't, they don't feel left behind because they, they, they understand the situation in the market, uh, right now, they got regular update from us. And every year we have also annual investor meeting whereby we invite all the investors and also the uh, uh, our portfolio company so that they can interact directly, ask questions with the portfolio company. So from the uh, uh, investor's perspective, they, they, get, they can understand uh, what actually they invested in and they can get direct exposure, direct communication with our portfolio company. And from the portfolio company, they also get uh, to network with uh, maybe successful people and uh, or uh, investors from overseas. Uh, then they can learn from uh, the lesson learned or uh, case study overseas uh, in that session. Yeah, in terms of like uh, portfolio company, uh, <coughs> Uh, whenever we invest, we have a regular uh, monitoring process with them that they, uh, uh, they uh, every month on a monthly basis, we, uh, we talk to them and uh, to understand the progress. And from there, actually, so that we, we really know what's happening, what happened to them. So when, it, so when even, for example, when this COVID happened, in February or March, uh, we already uh, uh, called them, and then we uh, so basically uh, we are not very reactive. Uh, we are not reactive in in uh, in uh, managing our portfolio, but we because we already have the blueprint, we stick with the blueprint, we stick with the uh, uh, strategic blueprint, and then uh, we we just uh, found out like how to how. To, what is the best way to make use of this uh, COVID situation? If it's just actually, uh, it's a half, if we can we can see it as a half glass, glass full or half glass empty. So uh, if you are optimistic, this is actually a very uh, good situation because if, in, if you are successful in this uh, COVID situation, uh, uh, basically you can survive with less or no competition at all. Because uh, if you are, I mean, if you are, uh, many of the company uh, uh, basically uh, chose to close down, or they don't, they don't have enough, uh, they don't have good strategy to to stay on, and then they cannot survive. So this is actually a very good opportunity, and for startup especially because of this situation, you can, for example, another benefit is like you can get, uh, you can hire people. Because right now a lot, a lot of, uh, I mean, people, a lot of uh, the, the bigger company are downsizing, so uh, so you can actually uh, it's a good opportunity to hire a good talent at this time. Yeah. 
And of course, then you can rethink about your own, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, a strategy. What have, what have gone right, what have gone wrong. And from there, you can actually uh, uh, fix this, this situation. You can actually, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a good social, social searching uh, moment. And what I like the most is because of this situation, I mean, last time, if you are a startup and you have to compete with the bigger boys, it's, it's difficult. But then now everyone has, everyone is facing the same problem. The economy yes. is not moving. So actually, uh, it, uh, you are in the same, uh, more on a fairer uh, playing, uh, uh, on the, uh, uh, playing ground. So uh, you can actually compete head to head with the, the bigger boys right now. The, the differentiator is only whether you feel optimistic or not. Yeah. So, and, and because of this, uh, and perhaps it's like for us, we are, uh, we never invest, I mean, maybe you heard the, the term FOMO, fear, fear of missing out. <laughs> we, yes. yeah, we, we actually don't care about fear of missing out. Yeah, uh, uh, we, uh, in fact, we never invest in the flavor of the year uh, 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 company. For example, a long time ago, uh, co-working space was very popular. We told them, we, we rejected all the co-working space uh, 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 deals until our, our own investors told me that, why are you so stupid? <laughs> <laughs> don't, you see? Uh, don't you see i mean like this company in the u.s uh, get so much valuation yeah but i, I told them yeah but it, it doesn't make sense because this is a real estate business it's just one meter by one meter and then there's uh, there's there is so much uh how can you multiply that value with one thousand i just don't understand yes. uh, in terms of like the uh, valuation growth and so on so that's something that we don't do then there were uh, a lot of a lot of uh, there was a trend of peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending. We didn't do it also because we thought that uh, 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 this is a high. Th this should be a regulated industry. Uh, we yeah. cannot just let the uh, risk management being being uh, uh, being taken care by the lender itself. By for example, I myself, uh, because yes. I am I might not be. Uh, financially savvy person and this is something dangerous if it is not done properly it will be we will repeat the same mistake happened in the u.s throughout uh, in 2007 whereby there was the mortgage uh, crisis uh, in, in the u.s yeah because people lend money uh, sorry banks lend money to the borrower who actually shouldn't shouldn't borrow at all and then the yes. worst case is like the, the bank securitize the, the loan to different to, to different uh, investment products, and that's what's happening today with the peer to peer lending. So, uh, uh, if there is not enough uh, uh, regulation, it might be uh, it might be uh, it might be uh, challenging. But I, I guess uh, peer to peer lending is still a good product because I guess in Indonesia, for example, uh, not many people not many uh, uh, people are bankable. So yes. the the need is there. They they do solve problems, but and I guess we we try. Uh, we hope that uh, we will we will pre we prefer to wait and see until the regulation is clearer and uh, and the uh, risk management is clearer in that sense. So because of that, I think uh, because we never follow the crowd, we always have our own thesis. Uh, so uh, before we invest in. So we, uh, uh, I think at this at this situation we are actually okay. We, um, like what I heard from any other uh, VC, uh, right now the focus is actually to 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 focus on uh, help, helping the current portfolio to keep them afloat. Uh, for us, uh, we don't actually <laughs> actually uh, the discussion is for normal. In fact. Uh, this is a good year, a good time for our portfolio company. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, the performance actually becomes better. In, uh, so, 
I guess the discipline actually uh, helped because from the very beginning yeah. when we invest, we know we identify all the risk factors, we identify the yeah. opportunities. And so when things go wrong, well, things go wrong, as in the, the external things go wrong, we know how to react uh, because we already planned for it. Yeah. Maybe uh, I think that's the easiest uh, situation uh, answer. Yeah. Yes. Glad to hear that. And also thank you for sharing about your view about the peer-to-peer -peer industry and also like the, the co-working space industry as well. And, and we understand that, how about the other industry, for example, like automotive, travel, or insurance tech? What do oh, you those? see for those industry from right now impacted by the COVID-19 until the next two or three years <clears throat> above? Yeah. So those industries exactly are the ones that we invested in. <laughs> yes, that's yeah. why I okay. asked you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, we invest in Travelio uh, in Indonesia. It is, uh, it is uh, 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 they started as a full surface uh, Airbnb, uh, uh, something like Airbnb, but a full surface management. So if you have a property, a apartment, uh, uh, last time you have to manage it yourself, but then with uh, Travelio, you can uh, you can have a, a peace of mind because Travelio will take care of everything for you. And with this COVID, actually, this is a good time for them because they can actually uh, focus on the ecosystem that uh, in the past they uh, they might they was they were they was uh, focusing more on onboarding the uh, uh, the the property owner, and also uh, uh, focusing on delivering the best uh, solution for the uh, uh, traveler, because uh, uh, it was uh, when Travelio started, uh, most of the client actually came from OTA, so from Agoda, from Traveloka, from uh, Booking.com. But then, uh, soon after, actually, they can uh, uh, the customer come directly from the Travelio.com. I guess because Travelio is really uh, good in uh, uh, in communicating the uh, uh, the the solution to the uh, the potential uh, uh, to not the potential to the existing customer and the potential customer, and that's why the uh, traveler directly jump from uh, OTA to uh, Travelio.com. And they were very successful on that, but then as many other people, when you are successful in one thing, sometimes you just focus on that and, and then uh, you didn't think about, you didn't have a chance to, to, to think uh, about other uh, business pipeline. So uh, during this COVID situation, uh, because travel is basically, uh, uh, I mean, we cannot travel. For example, now if you want to travel to, to fly to Bali or to fly to a different city, you have to do PCR tests and COVID tests. That's a troublesome. So they have to think out of the box. So now they uh, they um, they focus on uh, uh, building the ecosystem. This is something that we have actually. Uh, I mean, uh, we have in our mind. This is actually we, uh, where they want they want to go. So uh, before we invested in Travelo last time, we already created a thesis where will be the potential growth for them. To, uh, and then now they actually want to go into uh, uh, focusing on the uh, different uh, uh, the uh, different business pipeline that are they have synergy with the uh, current uh, the current uh, business model. So they are in a good shape. Yeah. <clears throat> the second one was uh, uh, Intertech. We invest in uh, Axinan. Uh, the name of the company is Axinan, but then now uh, the, the the consumer name is uh, Iglu Insurance. Uh, they uh, started as an e-commerce uh, uh, insurance uh, uh, solution provider. So uh, they uh, when they started, they both, they were successful in uh, Tokopedia. And then soon after, they, they were chosen by uh, Alibaba to, to help them in five countries. And then now they are uh, they basically behind most of the uh, e-commerce market that uh, you know, including Blibli, Bukhalapa, uh, Bineka, Shopee, Lazada, Shopify, yes, many of them. And uh, 
uh, in the past, as an investors, uh, we of, 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 uh, we uh, work happily with them. Uh, uh, work happily with them, as in like, because as investors, what we care is performance, revenue, profitability. That's what we care the most, right? And in the past, uh, 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 we understand that uh, what you call that. Uh, when the company uh, uh, for a startup to to win, they have they have to be very uh, what you call it uh, resourceful in uh, so that they can win the competition in the market. So sometimes they they sacrifice uh, uh, they sacrifice. I mean, they just they just want to focus on on the sales, on the on, on the numbers that, that they sacrifice the uh, the, the, the analysis the analysis part. And this is something that we have been trying uh, uh, telling them that you should use the, this data and it was the lesson learned that you got from previous month and then how we can actually improve in the, the next quarter. And we have been doing that for the past one year. But then, uh, and we have been quite, what you call it, a focal as well, in it, especially during the board meetings. But, uh, but thank God, I mean like this, the second quarter of uh, uh, this year, which is actually whereby all the economy is the slowest in the, in the world. Yes. Uh, the performance of their performance actually is uh, much, much better. Actually the best performance when, since they were actually uh, 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 set up, yeah. So I guess, uh, uh, again, I think, constant monitoring, constant collaboration with them and, uh, and uh, discipline, that really helps. So, and, and that's why during this difficult situation, we can react very fast. We can actually uh, 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 adapt faster and coming up with, uh, um, I mean, uh, with new uh, innovation faster also. And that actually helps. Yeah. And the third one, uh, uh, we invest in Carson. Carson is actually uh, uh, what you call that is a used car uh, uh, used car platform. Uh, they started in Malaysia, but then uh, they move on. Uh, they expand to Indonesia, um, and that's when the when we actually uh, invested in them. Yeah. So uh, we interested in them because we were quite successful in Malaysia already. And Malaysia and Indonesia somewhat uh, have a different kind of demography, and mm. uh, uh, so they 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 they, I mean they they bring the lesson learned from Malaysia to here in Indonesia. Of course, over here they have to innovate again because no matter what, it's a different uh, ecosystem, yeah. different uh, jungle, uh, and but then uh, the Indonesian market actually. Uh, Grow much faster than uh, the, uh, the performance from Indonesia is grow much faster than the one in Malaysia itself. So uh, uh, and and of course right now uh, of course there are so many challenges uh, in terms of like uh, flying and uh, now uh, being a, a global company uh, they have to work remotely and they have to prepare with the government. They have to be innovative in terms of like uh, uh, because like what Carson did basically uh, if you want to sell your car uh, you can you can go to the inspection point bring your car there and then they will they will inspect your car and then uh, they will uh, give you uh, up to option uh, if you want to sell now or you want to sell uh, to, uh, what, 24 hours later. Basically, if you want to sell now, they will give you a lower price. Uh, if you accept, then uh, uh, they will uh, they will process the transaction uh, uh, at that at that point. But then, if you are willing to wait, they will actually uh, 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 pass this uh, your 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 car to different dealers in Indonesia, mm -hmm. and then you can get a better price from uh, different dealers in Indonesia. So. Yeah, at this point, it is uh, quite challenging, but apparently, uh, well, uh, because uh, from the very beginning, when we invested in Carson, we, we believe that they should focus on ecosystem and thank God that they have actually uh, did 
quite a good job in that. So uh, after uh, in March it was really bad because they had to close. They had to close. In April still they had to close down, but in May uh, the uh, performance actually seventy uh, percent before uh, COVID situation. So uh, it's not they are doing quite well. Yeah. So I guess uh, I guess. I guess I think uh, I, the, it, the key for every uh, company, I guess uh, you have to focus on the foundation first. I mean, if you have a good foundation, no matter difficult the situation is, uh, you can actually come back quickly. Yeah. So although the although the uh, the, the the space is, is is hit badly, but then of course I mean like uh, if you are you have a strong foundation, you should be able to survive. Okay, thank you, Tizar, to share about those industry that you are investing right now. And now we want to move into the Q&A section. So we will let some of the participants to ask you some questions. And I will start with Agra Bintal, who wrote her question in, in the chat group. But Agra, can you just turn on your video and your your mic so you can ask directly. Well, okay, so, okay, I will read, okay, I will, I will, I will read on her question. So, yes, we, so she asked you about, can you elaborate how your VC to follow Evaluate a startup company, and what do you think about the industry of makeup artists from Agrabinta? Okay, so uh, uh, for us, uh, valuation is actually the least important things. When we met the company, uh, 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 we actually would like to know more about the background of the company of the founders first. That's a very first important thing. For what we really care the most is like why you left your job or, and uh, you chose to, to set up this new company. And that is very important for us. That's something that we really care the most. And, and uh, 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 so for valuation, we do care, but then if if we cannot understand your business and the reason why you set up uh, the company, we will not talk about your valuation at all because we will just maybe, okay, this is, uh, thank you for getting to know you, but, but I don't think we can invest in you right away. We will just say that. But then, uh, but then if, uh, if, if everything is getting, uh, I mean, if everything is clear, the reason why they, they, they started this business and then uh, the strategy, then we will move on to the valuation. Basically, what we have seen here in Indonesia, the valuation is very, very expensive. And I guess not only Indonesia, but across, across the globe. Perhaps it was because of some of the big venture capital that are successful enough in actually inflating the, <laughs> the, the valuation. This is something that, that uh, we, uh, we don't agree. Uh, if we already invested, for example, in your uh, in your uh, in your company in the first round, we uh, we shouldn't be the lead investor in the second round because it's like accountant with auditor doing the same job. I mean, if I am accountant and I'm also auditing my job, then mm -hmm. that's doesn't that's it's not correct, right? So if I already invest in you, I let other other uh, investors to to lead in the in the next round. So then we we it is more is better for everyone uh, so that it will be audited better. Uh, otherwise, oh yeah, I already invested in you and then now I think this is your uh, uh, new value. And what is the basis for that? Yeah, so that's, uh, I mean, of course there are many bases, but then there will be, uh, it will be uh, more independent if it is done by a different, uh, different uh, 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 investor. And the way we see is like uh, right now, there is a huge gap between uh, valuation and revenue. 
at the end of the day, at the end of the day when we uh, set up a startup, we set up a company, any company, whether it is a technology company, a traditional company, restaurant, a service business, we, I, I guess we all want to make money, right? We want to make money and we want to make profit. So uh, I, uh, the, the situation now is like there are uh, in many, uh, uh, the gap between the revenue and and uh, valuation is getting bigger and bigger. But that's why I uh, maybe perhaps this profit will help to narrowing the, the gap or make it, uh, I don't know, but that's my, 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 my hope. Uh, so for us, it's very important uh, for you to, uh, for, the, uh, for the founders to, 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 uh, to clarify how, how, how would you narrow down uh, uh, the revenue and the valuation? So if you ask for uh, this amount of valuation and now your revenue is only uh, this much, and how do you want to grow uh, 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 as fast as the valuation growth? Because right now, uh, uh, we saw that the valuation growth can be faster than the revenue growth. <laughs> and if that is the case, yeah. it's very scary. I mean, like, uh, is as investor, when will I, when will I get back my money? Uh, we because uh, otherwise it it is become a speculation rather than investing. Uh, yes. If it is speculation, yeah, then what's the point? Of, uh, uh, I mean, what's the point of uh, the investors in, invest in any venture capital? They can just speculate themselves, right? So I guess uh, we have to back. We have to go back to the fundamental. The revenue, gross profit, EBITDA, net profit, and when you can be EBITDA positive as soon as possible. If uh, and then uh, and for us, the one that a big no no. If uh, if you do business with a negative gross profit, basically mm. if you subsidize your customer, uh, because if that is the case, uh, yeah, it, it will it will be difficult to be sustainable. I guess that's okay. my answer. Yeah. Yes. And maybe can you give one or two sentences to answer her second question? She asked you about what you think about makeup as artist industry. If you're familiar. Oh, yeah. Just a brief. Because she built a, a, strat, a part, she built, built Beauty Bell application marketplace for make, make, makeup artists. Yeah. Okay. The reason why I like uh, uh, I like uh, doing venture capital is because I keep I keep meeting new people from new industry. For example, I never met yeah. anyone from a makeup uh, uh, makeup artist, artist uh, background before. So this is something new. So uh, normally, what we uh, so I don't uh, you you ask me now. I don't have a specific uh, answer for that. But then, of course, uh, normally when we approach a uh, new company, new industry, we, 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 we have a tools that, I mean, basically, we have tools to, to, uh, to understand that we, uh, your, your industry and then your product, your services, and, and uh, from there, we will decide whether we, 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 will, we would like to invest in this business or not. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I guess... Uh, I think our 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 opinion is is not really important. I guess it is it is you as the founder, is the one that has to be able to uh, uh, to convey your message, your strategy to everyone else, because startup by 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 definition, I mean like it's a new model, a new business model, something that never been done before, something that might disrupt the market. So uh, you, I mean, the founders we must be able to, con to convince people about that. So it's not about our opinion, but it's about you to convey your message. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So moving on to the next question, uh, because like I see that there is another person who asked in the chat group, so I will start to scroll and then I see that from Widi Kis Wanto. And Widi, do you mind to just ask directly to Tizar 
or Hi Tida, how are you? Hi. Good. Still, still remember me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, hi. Uh, yeah, just uh, as I wrote, uh, I believe you receive, uh, uh, as a venture capitalist, you receive a lot of uh, proposal year to years. So how is the trend now uh, compared to a few years ago? Is it uh, the numbers is reducing or you find it as actually you, you evaluate more proposal compared to a few years ago? Well, uh... I think for us it's like uh, before I set up uh, uh, VC. I mean, we have. Uh, I mean, I have monitored. I have been involved. I mean, I have been actively monitoring the market. If you are talking about volume, I guess the volume remains the same. It's only that last time there were so many noises, so many. Uh, the quality are not as good as today. Uh, uh, but then, uh, it's, uh, because I guess now. Uh, uh, we are, uh, I mean, last time I, our focus were, was mostly on Indonesian market, and then now we receive deal proposal from all over the world. Like uh, last, every, actually we monitor our deal uh, uh, process every quarter. Like uh, last quarter, we reviewed uh, about four, almost 400 deals, and I think it, it comes from 20 plus countries uh, so we are not only reviewing Indonesian deal. So in terms of the deal flow, uh, uh, we actually uh, get, uh, we don't get lesser deals, we get actually uh, uh, about the same amount of deals, uh, uh, quarter by quarter, if not increasing, because I, I guess now uh, with this kind of uh, situation around the world, uh, they need to look for new opportunities and Indonesia somewhat is uh, is a big market, and that's why a lot of company are willing to I mean coming uh, a lot of overseas company also want to come here, and they approach us uh, to help to to, to be first so that uh, they can expand to Indonesia. For example, the quality is getting better, uh, the quantity I think is about the same, but then it's getting the quality is getting better. Yeah. 